Hey, what's up guys? My name is Michael Westbrook. Thanks for checking out this video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about building a great amp sound on the HX Stomp. Now, this really applies to any of the HX platforms, um, but I'll be using an HX Stomp. I'll have that hooked up to HX Edit so you guys can see what I'm doing. I wanna walk you through some of the parameters and maybe hopefully give you some understanding about what certain parameters do and how I like to think about them to help me dial in a sound really quickly and easily. If you've seen some of my other HX Stomp videos, then you know that I like using the HX Stomp as kind of an amp replacement. When I can use amps, I'll use my amps, but in scenarios where I need a direct solution, the HX Stomp works great for that. I'm usually setting up a sound that I'm going to use overdrive pedals with and use other pedals with. So that's kind of the sound that we'll be going for today. Initially, when I had the idea for this video, I wanted to just build the sound from scratch. Um, through, over the course of the video. And I quickly learned that this was just gonna take too long um, and it just, I don't think it was gonna be very helpful for you guys. So um, I spent a little time and I dialed in a sound real quickly using one of the AC models. Um, I'm not super familiar with this model and the sound that I have um, is a pretty good sound, but I haven't spent a ton of time on it. I just want to kind of use it as a basis to walk you guys through some of the parameters and hopefully give you a little un more understanding on what those parameters do. Before we get into it, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It's a huge help for me. Um, I'm kind of new at this, growing my channel. I started this channel at the beginning of 2020. All you guys have been super supportive. Um, and I've really had a blast kind of learning how to do this. Join me on the journey, hit that subscribe button. Um, I'm usually doing a video a week, so I'm not posting a ton of videos blowing up your feed, but I always try to make sure they're informative and hopefully entertaining to watch. All right, let's get into it. All right, first we're gonna take a listen to a quick little demo. Um, the, all the guitars in this demo were recorded using the sound that I'm kind of talking about uh, later in the video. But I'm not going to play through the sound and adjust parameters so you can hear the differences. A lot of them are super subtle um, and are probably just best left up to you to try and experiment with as you're dialing in sounds. The purpose of this video is really to just give you some more information about what the controls do and how to think about them. Uh, so that it's easier for you to dial in your own tones. All right, let's take a listen. So you can see here um, in HX Edit, um, I've got the A30 Fawn Bright model pulled up. Another thing to note here is that I have a speaker IR that I'm using. I find that using IRs in the HX Stomp is a quick way to take the tones up a notch. I find that by using IRs, everything just sounds better. Now, that being said, the flexibility of using the cabs that are included in the HX Stomp is nice. Being able to change out mics and try different cabs and different types of speakers and everything, that's really great. But for me, using cab IRs is a quick way to make the tones even better. So here on the A30 Fawn Bright model, I've kind of dialed some things in pretty quickly. Honestly, this sounds pretty great when you first pull it up, when you just select the model. Um, I was pleasantly surprised when I selected it. Let's walk through the parameters and I wanna tell you guys um, kind of what I think about when I'm looking at all these parameters. Some are really straightforward, but others are not as easy. So first we have our drive, which essentially is our gain. That's kind of a, a general overdrive. So I'll say up front, this is not the only place that we're going to be able to adjust the amount of overdrive or saturation that we're getting from the amp, but it's a good place to start. So next we have bass. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, this is just controlling the amount of low end in our signal. Another tone tip here, I find with a lot of beginners that they tend to use way too much bass in their sound. As a guitar player, you don't really need that much low end, especially if you're playing with a band where there's a bass player, or maybe you're playing in a band where there's bass and keys and another guitar. 
all of that low frequency information builds up. And so most of the time you can get away with using a lot less bass than you, you would otherwise think. I will say that some of these controls are gonna vary between what amp you're using or what model you're using on the HX Stomp. So as we move forward, keep that in mind. Some of these parameters are specific to this amp. And while you know there are going to be other parameters that are specific to other amps. Next, we have the cut control. Now, this is similar to the matchless model in that as you turn it up, you're actually getting less treble. So it's cutting the high frequencies. Next, we have the treble, which is a different, you know, again, high end frequency um, control. So one thing to note with the cut and the treble control, these are kind of interactive because they both deal with high frequency content, right? The brightness of our overall sound. So if you adjust, say you adjust the cut first and then you adjust the treble, you might wanna go back and adjust the cut um, to see kind of where that's sitting for you now. Again, they're interactive and so they're going to affect each other. So you might have to go back and forth between the cut and the treble to, to get it where you want it. Now, if all of that wasn't difficult enough, we have another control that I feel like kind of controls the high end as well, and that's a presence control. This really takes some experimenting to kind of get a handle on you know, what specific frequencies or area the presence controls and the treble and the cut, but they're all interactive. So definitely spend a lot of time kind of trying different sounds with all of these to adjust your high end and to tweak your high end. Next, we have the channel volume. The channel volume from what I've found is really just a volume for your overall sound. I don't think that it affects the overall gain or, you know, saturation in any way. It just really affects the, you know, the level of the sound that you're getting from the model. This is great for balancing things out or, you know, getting enough volume overall from the HX Stomp. So our next control is a little deceptive in that it's called the master. So we think of this as our master volume, right? On the HX Stomp, and this is how it works with guitar amps usually as well, the master also affects saturation. It also affects how much overdrive you're getting. Now, by overdrive, I don't necessarily mean this um, in the traditional sense where we think of as we turn it up, we're just gonna get loads of distortion, right? This is a little more subtle than that, but I find typically that as I turn it up and if I have the master all the way up, I'm getting a little bit more saturation, a little bit more overdrive that kind of comes out in the mids and the lower mids. So I find sometimes I can clear things up or clean things up by bringing the master down a touch. Now, this has been my experience, not only in the HX Stomp, but also with guitar amps. I have a matchless C30 that does this exact same thing. I usually run the master, um, even when I can run it as loud as I want to, I usually run the master at about 10 or 11 o'clock, um, depending on how much kind of low mid content I want. It'll help, it's a good way to kind of clean up things and make things a little clearer um, and adjust the overall saturation of the sound. So the next control we have here is SAG. Now SAG has to do with kind of traditional kind of tube amp saturation or compression. That's really how I like to think of it is that it's a form of compression. So as I turn it up, my signal is going to be more compressed. It might get a little more saturated. If I want it to remain punchy and direct sounding, I'll turn my SAG down. This is going to make the sound more immediate. The next control we have is hum. I found this to really not be of much use other than getting extra noise. I typically have this all the way down. Even adjusting it all the way up and all the way down, I can't really tell much difference that of how it affects the overall sound other than just introducing some noise. Okay, so now we're starting to get into some of the kind of harder to understand controls. Um, and the last three that we have here are the ripple, bias, and bias X controls. So now we'll take a look at the ripple control. Again, this is a little harder to understand, but this essentially is modeling inconsistencies that we find with tube amps and, and kind of the power handling of those tube amps. This is a pretty subtle control, but basically I think of it as if you want the amp to sound maybe older, a little more broken in, a little more raw, um, and have some of those organic inconsistencies, then turn it up. If you want something that's cleaner, that's just more pure in a sense, then turn it down. 
The next control we're looking at is the bias control. I like to think of the bias control again as a form of saturation or overdrive of the amp. Um, this is a way to kind of control that in a different way um, and kind of give it some different characteristics. So on this specific model, the bias control, as you turn it down, you get more distortion, more saturation, and as you turn it up higher, you get more headroom. Now, I haven't gone back to check this, but I feel like this varies from amp to amp. I feel like maybe sometimes it's been backwards, but don't quote me on that, but just know that the bias control is a, just another way to, to affect the overdrive and the saturation of the amp. Kind of mess with that and see how it affects the sound. For me, if I want something that's punchier, that's less compressed, then you know on this particular model, I'm going to run it higher so that I have more headroom, so that the sound is more immediate. All right, so lastly, we have this bias X control. Now this is another control that's a little harder to understand. It's a little more subtle, but for me, this is kind of um, has to do with the attack. I feel like when I'm adjusting it at the extremes, I'm hearing a difference of the attack and it almost serves as a sort of compression. On this particular model, when I have it lower, I'm noticing more attack, um, more of a direct sound. Whereas when I turn it up higher, I feel like the attack of the note, the initial transient of it is a bit rolled off um, and is a bit compressed. This is great for certain types of sounds. It just depends on what kind of sound you're going for. If you want something super punchy, super immediate, um, then lower is the way to go. But if you want something that's a little softer around the edges, maybe your attacks and your transients aren't as sharp, um, to give you a little bit more of that organic type sound, then you're gonna wanna run this a little higher. Hopefully this video helped you understand some of the other parameters on the HX Stomp and ultimately helps you dial in some great tones more easily. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the links in the description below. Um, there are links to my HX Stomp presets, IRs, Kemper profiles, um, as well as some affiliate links um, for gear that I use and love. All right, until next time, I'll see you out there.